Okay, we're getting video five. Now, I've figured everything out. I'm sitting here with a friend who's helping me test, and I'm also teaching how to do some scripting. If you would like to learn content creation in Second Life, you can always find me, The Dark Hand. Come to my tavern. Uh, I'm always hanging out, making something. It's what I do. I, I've been doing this 14 years, and all I do is create things. And I have a small little tavern. It's not much to it. Um, in Second Life, I've whole, owned whole regions in the past. But um, these days, I just, I don't need much. I Things I make are very low prim, so I don't need a lot of prims to use. Um, this is my little tavern. But here's the funny part. You ready to see the funny part? Da, da, da. It's in the middle of a rental sim. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a little, little square in the middle of a bunch of bullshit. It's kind of funny. Um, gone from owning whole regions to renting a very small lot. But you know what? This is all I need. Um, so back to what, what we were doing. So I figured out what we're going to do. I have this dragon coin system that I use for my games. And the dungeon master menu we have got up. And we've added this to this DM menu to all the menus. And it allows you to get to the dice, which you can choose to have any of these rolled. And the way it's going to work is say you want someone to roll an eight sided dice. The next menu that will drop, which I haven't made yet, will be a list of people around you. You will choose their name. The dice will slide up here with their name over it, and they know to click it, and it will uh, it will roll that dice. Um, another part of the DM menu is looking up how many players are in game. These are for going in order of your combat, and um, some of the critters we're going to be fighting. Um, I've only got a few so far. Uh, once again, cards resin kind of crappy and slow. we got to work on that. So basically, this will be a list of 24 different foes, actually, when I'm done. Um, and you'll be able, leading up to the Ray Crystal Dragon. So we'll have smaller foes as we come through here. Then they're going to start really getting harder. Of course, these last couple leading up to the, to, the, to the final one is going to be really hard. And you're going to need more than yourself to beat the Ray Crystal Dragon. Um, you're going to have to put together a weapon that you claim out of these regions. I think I mentioned in my last video, I hired a writer who's going to do the writing for the lore, for the webpage. She's going to start with the first quest. And she's going to do each one of the quests. She's a very good writer. Um, so we're real happy to have her on board. Um, things are coming lighter on. You know, we're still at just two scripts. And then one in our hut. So a total of three. I'd love to keep it in that range. I don't know if that's possible or not. Um, some of these are getting a little heavy, like this one. Um, so... Be typically, what I'll do is I'll put it in a memory scale in them soon, and I'll start checking how heavy they are on resource use. Um, I did figure out how to fix this. I've done it with some other cards. The unfortunate reality is, is I have to remake all these cards, or not remake them. I already have them, but make them much smaller and change their format. And even then, as I was told, because of the detail in them, I'm going to still have that little problem that everybody I know I've talked to you about it's like look it's as far as second life you're going to have to live with that oh thank you lord so it is what it is um, there's going to be some hang time in those resin but today I'm going to work on getting them down even smaller and try to minimize it as much as possible so today's checklist is the finalization of the card resin and then we're going into the dice system I talked about a memory system that I was making for um, players, and I've made that. So now when you log in to the game with the HUD, uh, you're added to a list, one with your UID, 
one with your character type. And that list is in both scripts, and I can access it through combat, and I can access it through clicking, because both scripts have some ability of touch in them, um, but they're only uh, filtered to certain prims that are touched. So we figured all that out, so that will stop people from just randomly clicking things and causing a reaction to the dice or anything, um, unless it's their turn. And the way I've done that is it will use that example on rolling of dice. The dungeon master will pull out this dice for everybody to do their tier roll to find out who attacks first. Um, that list will be maintained in order for each one of the critters here. I'm going to come up with a way that automatically does it. People aren't going to like that, but what would it really matter if I just had it automatically roll everybody's character to see who goes first? I mean, it's not going to change the end result of them clicking this, and it's going to save a resource on the script. So there will be an auto system for when we run into a foe that will run everybody through a roll automatically, and then it will list the players in line of attack by that role. <coughs> Once that's done, it is done. Uh, I just have to like implement it into the combat system. Um, now we're really r cooking with gas, as they say, because the memory system is really core to how all this works. When you're building things, you know, first you do your layout, how it's going to look. Then you go through all your trial and error of how can people screw this up by just touching things out of order? Uh, how can I make this where, you know, it's going to only react at certain things? You know, like, you click it all here and nothing happens. You click it here and you get a menu. If I click it, I get one menu. If she clicks it, she gets a different menu because I'm a dungeon master and she's not. So we have to have all these things in place of putting priority of different users and clicks. And that's just kind of part of development. So we got that done, and now we know what we're going to do with our dice system. We have our writer, and we're going to take her a good week, I hope, to work on the writing, giving me one week to finish up the system. And the way it's going to work is, as I said before, it'll be a system where you can follow the um, built-in quests, or you can make your own. Uh, full Dungeon Master... Uh, Dungeon Master... Uh, menuing, um, like I said, uh, and it will be rest in games. And here's a little secret: I don't play Dungeons and Dragons. I think I played it twice in junior high, and I was I'm very dyslexic, um, and I just wasn't good with writing and stuff. So I I never I'll be honest I never played Dungeons and Dragons really, um, but I've spent the past three days uh, ingesting. Dungeons and Dragon, how to play um, YouTube's. So I really got a hang of how it works now and how the rolls work and how the dice work. And that's development, you know. Some people will tell you make things you love and that's what will be successful. And some people will say make what's trending and that will be successful. I make what I find an interest for. I wanted to make the way this came about was I wanted to make these dice for a different build I wanted a HUD with a dice on it to choose to roll and that HUD didn't sell very well but I had made these and I was like you gotta do something with them and I started making these games for my dragon coin I made this one this is a math game uh, it's kind of hard <laughs> uh, a trivia game these are like slot machines they do higher or lower they have all kinds of effect. They shoot lightning out. You know, the old find the dice as it switches the cards around or the cups around. Uh, here's another multiplayer one of even or odd. And this is how it really, between them dice and this game here, I was working with a role playing sim, making them a hug for their, their role play. And one of the guys said, Yo, what we love in role play is gambling with like fake coin, of course, so it's legal. And we don't want to get in any trouble. And I mean, so he's like, but just a little fun machine so we can have this like gambling halls. And then everybody has to give a percentage to the owner. And that's just part of the role play. And he's like, there's just nothing out there. So I made this system. It runs on PHP. And it's basically little games. And here's one of them. It's a higher or lower. Higher. And if you get higher, you get coin. Um, if, you, if 
be wrong. Which I won't be wrong for a while here. You get three tries. You get three wrongs. If you're wrong three times, the game ends. So basically, I made this uh, box and stuff. Um, so there you go. You miss one. You get a little skull here. Um, and these are all... This one I actually made completely. Sometimes I get people to help me with them um, and make certain parts. Like I had someone made a dragon there. This is one that I was actually able to conquer. Making a box and a skull just wasn't that hard for me. But um, ah, I thought I'd lose on that one. But anyways, that's how these games started. And um, Let's go ahead and leave so I can get back to the other thing. Sorry I got dragged out on this video. But I just want to show you... Know, how I got involved in this, how this comes about. Um, let's reset it. And it resets itself. And you get three and the box closes. And it's either you can win money or you don't. And you can also give people money with this. I can drop this list and I can just give her a random amount of money um, to play games as long as she's wearing my hood. Um, so that's how this came about. Um, making games and then I was like you know what would be cool a Dungeons and Dragons game scene everybody around here in Second Life seems to be very into it and there just isn't anything really out there that I see and so I started making this and, and that's how a guy like me who grew up surfing around skateboards and just never really got into that stuff at 50 years old starts making Dungeons and Dragons games <laughs> that's the way it works but anyways Make what your, make what intrigues you. Make something you love. Um, make something that challenges you. It doesn't have to be what you're into, as long as it challenges you, and you get that like, you know, that want to do it, that want to make it, like this. You know, this came out of not out of a Dungeons and Dragon lover's mind. This came out of the mind of a person who just likes to make things, and. And as you see, I think it's coming along. So, if you ever want to make some stuff in Second Life or learn content creation or PHP or how to build websites, any like geeky stuff, because my next step is I'm linking this to my database. I have a website for my uh, my, my games and stuff. And this is going to put people's scores on a website. So, we're going to go into some PHP through this too. And some SLS. So, if you'd like to learn, come check me out. Um, the Dark Hand Resident Camp. All one word, The Dark Hand resident second word i'm the only one with that name in second life so just type that in search find me dragon's eye, dragon eye tavern um i'm located um on the dragon eye sim uh, easy to find have a nice day